Welcome. This is Samantha Skelly, and you are listening to the Hungry for Happiness podcast, where we dig deep and discover how to reconnect into your body, heal your relationship to food, and finally feel the liberation and freedom you desire. Kleenex is encouraged, and pants are optional. What's up, Phoenixes, and welcome back to the Hungry for Happiness podcast. You are listening to episode number 20 with Connor Beaton. This is such a good conversation. In this episode, we talk about the mindset of men and how women can support men in cultivating emotional intelligence. It's super interesting. He said something really profound. Women are the permission cards for men's vulnerability and growth. I love that because it's not from a place of trying to control, but from us being the example, you know, showing up, talking about our emotions, being vulnerable, processing them in real time. It's a, it's quite a beautiful dance. Connor is the founder of Man Talks, an international organization focused on men's health, wellness, success, and fulfillment. Connor is also an international speaker, podcast host, and lifestyle entrepreneur. Before founding Man Talks, Connor worked with Apple, and he worked with leading high-performance sales and operations teams. Since founding Man Talks, Connor has spoken on stage at TEDx with Lewis Haas, Gary Vaynerchuk, Danielle Laporte, and has taken Man Talks to over a dozen cities internationally. I just want to remind you that we are currently enrolling for the Society, our signature group coaching program, which is a six-month journey to finally end the battle you have with food and your body. This program is by application and invitation only, so when you apply, we'll hop on a call and we'll make sure that it is the perfect fit for you. If you go to www.hungryforhappiness.com backslash society application, all the details are there for you. I hope you enjoy this episode. What's up, Phoenixes, and welcome back to the Hungry for Happiness podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you. I have Connor Beaton on, who is one of my best dude friends, um, and he is also the founder of Man Talks. You guys heard me introduce him in the in the intro, but I'm super excited. Um, Connor and I have been have been like on this path of growing our companies kind of like alongside each other in Vancouver. Now you're kind of like half in New York. I'm in San Diego, you know, and now we're kind of doing it apart, but it's been really, really cool to see what he's created in the world and, and just witnessing him, him, him do that. So I'm so excited to have you on. Thanks for having me. I'm I'm jacked. As soon as you like sent me the email and was like, "Hey, I want to have you on the podcast," I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be <laughs> so much fun." <laughs> we're gonna giggle a lot. We were talking about some inappropriate things before I press record, so those things may or may not come up. I don't know. Um, so, Connor, what is the number one thing about life that makes you feel most alive? Oh man, I, I've always been a nature guy. Like when I was a kid, you could find me in the backyard in my, you know white fruit of the looms, ginch, I'm gonna call it ginch, <laughs> ginch. Un- underwear, <laughs> underwear, tidy oh. whities, um, you know, just like digging around in the backyard in the dirt and trees. And mm. that, that like little kid is still in me. And I just love getting out in the nature. It makes me feel alive. I love getting out in nature with good friends, good people, mm. going hiking, exploring the world, like nothing else just makes me come alive like that. I'm going to Scotland at the end of this month Ooh. and I have not felt so jacked up in, in a mm. while. So yeah. What are you going to Scotland for? Just a trip, just like a little vacation. Yeah. Um, nice. My lady and I, it's just, it's time. We're actually, we're going for a birthday party in Marrakesh, oh, um, which is like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Who who has their birthday party in Marrakesh? No kidding. That's, that's like baller styles right there. I, I know. I know. I was like, well, I can't justify going to Marrakesh for four days. So let's turn this into a vacation and go to yeah. Scotland. Is that like a really good friend? Yeah. Because I was going to say, if I was like, hey, Connor, I'm having my birthday in Marrakesh. Do you want to come? I'm like, the chance of that? I don't know. I mean, there's like, there's like eight or 10 people going there. But yeah, I mean, it's once that's in a cool. lifetime, you know, it's going to yeah. be good. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love it. Well, it's really cool. I'm really excited for what we're going to be talking about today because the subjects that we touched on before we press record are, I know is like a pain point for a lot of the women that listen to this podcast. So the majority of the women listening, you know, overthink in their heads, high performers, very much in their masculine. 
and have a hard time kind of really settling into their feminine because they don't really know what that feels like on a visceral level. And, and for the, the majority of their life, it's like, we get our worth through working hard and forcing and, and, you know, proving ourselves. And like, that is all very masculine tendencies, but we've been told it, like we've been conditioned that like, that's how we get our worth. And so hearing it from a guy's perspective is just like incredible. So I'm super excited to, to dig into this. Um, so let's just like go right in on like the, the, um, actually, no, let's start at this piece. So I was, I was having dinner with a friend, uh, one of my, one of my guy friends who's like, you know, a, a guy obviously. And we were talking about feeling. Hmm. And, and he's incredibly intelligent, very logical, very practical, very analytical. And whenever I asked him, like, how do you feel about that? It's like, there's like this, like awkward, like disconnection. Like he's like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. And so I was thinking to myself as I was having dinner with him, I'm like, how can women help men to feel more and to really get in their bodies? And I think the whole, like, get in your body thing is like something that like is consumed with women more so than men. And it, it, it shouldn't be, you yeah. know, like, like, like when, when both of us are in our bodies, that's when we can integrate. That's when we're so powerful. And that's ultimately how we're going to really coexist more beautifully. And so I would just love to hear like your thoughts on like, how can women, how can we help men get into their bodies and feel more? Yeah, I think, oh man, it's, it's such a huge, it's such a huge topic. I think it's so important, especially right now, you know, we, there's a lot of mainstream media around masculinity and how it's mm. broken and, mm -hmm. you know, how men are suffering. And I think a lot of women are starting to ask these questions, you know, they're mm. like, okay, I see that the men in my life are struggling, or I yeah. see that the men in my life are missing something, or they're trying to find something. And they're kind of like on this search, how do I help them? How do I support and I think that there's two things. I think where we, where we start is understanding perspectively what's happening for men. And, mm. and that's really, that creates the relatability, right? Just right. like if guys want to understand, if guys really want to be able to help women, we need to be able to understand what's happening for them. And so, you know, for a lot of guys, we are, we're very analytical, right? And we're mm. stuck in our head and we, we get raised to sort of idolize intelligence, and we've, we've just come through this huge age of intelligence, right? Like we've really put the intellect for the last, you know, millennia, the last hundred years on a pedestal, maybe even yeah. longer, right? Yeah. But the, the, the intellect has really been praised and that's come along with the patriarchy. That's come along with, you know, the, the, the sort of like masculine leadership sometimes because that's what we value. We value rationality. Right, and so I right. think that what women need to mm. understand sometimes about men is that we've oftentimes grown up in this space of being taught that intelligence is equated with masculinity and emotional right. intelligence is something that's more feminine. And so we are taught to value our mm. analysis. We're taught to value um, rationalizing things. Mm. And the problem with rationalization is if you break the word down, you, it's rational lies, right? Like you can, you can lie rationally about pretty oh, much wow. anything in your right. life, right? right. Like I, I have rationalized some of the worst behavior in my life. I have mm. rationalized some of the shittiest choices in my life. And, and so many men get mm. caught in that. And there's a great quote that says, the, the longest journey that a man will ever walk is from his head to his heart. And oh my gosh, that, <laughs> that is gold. Oh, oh it's, the, it's the 18 inches from his head to his heart. The, okay, say that one more time. The greatest... The, the longest journey a man longest. will ever take is the 18 inches from his head to his heart. Holy moly, guacamole. That, I, <laughs> I, love, I love that. I love that. Okay, keep going. <laughs> so, so, so to understand that like men, like we live in our head. We yeah. live there. And, and I mean, we kind of live in two heads if you really wanted to be weird about it. But, <laughs> but like we just like we live in that space, right? And, and if we yeah. and we get out of that space, we're like in our pants, right? And, and right. that's... That's kind of the stereotype, but then, then you have like this huge subset of men that are starting to like feel into things, right? And they're kind of like reclaiming a healthy, balanced sense of masculinity. How do I be intelligent, but how do I be socially intelligent and emotionally intelligent? And so, you know, where women can support, I think is just to kind of like move into that answering yeah. your question. I think where women can support, like this is a huge thing and I'd love to dialogue with you about this, but 
one of the biggest ways is to actually not necessarily teach men. And what I mean by that is that imagine, imagine that you wanted to learn more about masculinity and wanted to learn more, or, or let's just say you wanted to learn more about intelligence or rationalization or analytical thinking. Let's start there. Right. Critical analytical thinking. And a man was trying to teach you about critical thinking and teach you how to like, you know, be more masculine or be, or even be more feminine. Mm -hmm. Like you would not probably be very receptive to that. Like, don't teach me how to be a woman. Right. right like right. that would just yeah. not be yeah, yeah, yeah. super great. But we mm -hmm. have this like huge culture that's popped up where a lot of women are trying to teach men how to be men. And mm -hmm. guys are like re not revolting against it, but they're kind of like, what do you know Who? about being a guy? Right, what do you know right. about like mm -hmm. testosterone coursing through your body, making you want to build, break, fight, and fuck things? What do you yeah. know about that? Yeah. Just yeah. like I have no idea what it's like to be in a feminine body and have the estrogen and like, you know, go yeah. through what it's like to have a period. Like, I don't know what that's like. So why the hell would I teach you about that? Right, right. So I think, you know, where women can support is to start to realize that a lot of men struggle when when a woman's like trying to tell him how he can be a better man. Mm -hmm. Like it's that's actually emasculating. Where it's like, oh, well, this is what you can do to be a better man. This is where you're failing. This is like that actually does not help. What does help is to find other men that are good role models. To find other groups of guys that are shifting the narrative and the conversation. To to find events and people and books and to start to start allowing them and sort of guiding them in the direction of asking those questions for themselves, of finding right. those resources for themselves. And that is one of the most powerful things. I like to say that women are permission card holders for men's vulnerability and men's growth. Notice mm -hmm. it's permission card permission holders, card. not teachers, right? right, right. And, and there's, there's a, so many resources out there. And I say this with like the deepest love and respect because I have personally learned so much from women over the course of my life that, is, that has been so invaluable. And, and I think it's by guiding, guiding guys in the right direction, but also being an example of, of emotional intelligence. Not necessarily saying like, this is what you need to do and this is how you need to do it. But to come from a space of like, well, you know, when I'm really struggling and we know when I feel X, Y, and Z, this is how I try and process it. This is how I, this is how it feels in my body mm. because so many men actually just live in, in their head and yeah. they're completely disconnected from everything below. Yeah. And that's where, you know, anger comes up. And this is where, you know, mm. you ask them, how are you feeling right now? And they give you a logical answer, right? Mm. They say, well, I think that I'm failing this way. Yes. Right. Yeah, that was one of the most fascinating things. It's like I notice as I'm gonna take it back to this conversation over dinner. It was like there, there was a lot of like, well, I, I think it's like this. And I'm like, and 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 you're like, I'm gonna call myself out. I was trying to teach because I was trying. I thought I was being helpful, but I was probably just being like class A annoying. He was probably like, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> but it's like I, I was trying to like give him context almost like like well well would you feel when when there's like a yes in the body what do you feel when there's a no in the body and he's like i don't understand what you're talking about like i don't actually get that at all yeah. and understanding that like we are so fundamentally different i love your point like don't teach but like inspire like be that be mm -hmm. that example be that like example of like emotional intelligence and um you know like being intuitive about like your behaviors, but don't try and like put a square peg in a, what's that saying? Put a square peg in a round hole. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> don't do that. Cause that's not going to work. Well, and I, I think what you're, I think what you're pointing at is, is really crucial, right? Because how men feel emotional intelligence is often a little bit different and how we, how we feel emotions in the body might actually be a little bit different. Right. Like I, I like to say that there's, you know, for, I had this great, um, I, I spoke at this event, it was all women and, and uh, there was like 2000 women that were in business and it was in New York. And, and I kind of joked around. I said, you know, I'm, I'm only here today to translate masculinity. I'm just here to translate <laughs> what's going on for men. But, yeah. you know, oftentimes, a lot of a lot of the verbiage around emotions have become synonymous with with femininity right with women mm. and so things like intuition seem for the for the everyday guy seem it seems like a feminine word 
even though if you talk to really incredible businessmen, guys that are running companies, guys that are professional athletes, they talk about intuition. They like literally lay out intuition and what intuition is and where they feel it in their body and how it shows up. But they don't call it that. Oftentimes they refer to it as instinct or they refer to it as their gut. And so really from, from a feminine perspective, one of the ways that you can also support is to start to learn the masculine language, mm-hmm. right? Just like we try and learn the feminine language of like, okay, what is she trying to say right now? Because mm-hmm. men and women often communicate in very different ways, right? Like, for example, men speak often in, in possibilities, right? right? So we'll, we'll speak about this is a possibility that we can go do. We could go on this date or we can go on that date or we could go to that restaurant. And they sort of like think and analyze things out loud sometimes. Right, and, right. and everything's like a possibility. Whereas women will often hear in these promises. So they'll hear from this perspective of like, oh, he wants to go do that Friday night. And then when it doesn't happen, it's just like, why didn't that, why didn't that happen? And the guy's right. like, well, I was just saying that that's, that's a maybe like, oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. That's so true. I've never actually thought of it like that before. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think, I think that kind of like breaking down how men communicate because we're saying the same thing in different ways. And so we need to sort of like be able to translate across gender, not, not always, but this is, this is a good general rule that, that oftentimes we're saying the same things, but in a, almost like a different language, right? So Absolutely. when a guy, when a guy says, oh yeah, like, I don't know, it was just like the, I just felt like it was the, the, I just felt it in my gut and that's the choice that I made. What he's talking about is intuition, you know, mm. or he was like, oh, it's just instinctual. What he's talking about is intuition. That's, right. that's how he's feeling it. So in there is the opportunity for his partner or, you know, whoever, mm. the, the, the woman in the conversation to say like, oh, like, okay, cool. So like, where did you actually feel that? And how did you process that mentally? Because then he's going to be able to tap into and uncover what's actually happening from an emotional standpoint. The other thing that I want to talk about is anger. Mm. And this is something that I cannot stress enough. Anger is a completely healthy and normal emotion. And it's been, it's been demonized in men and it's been demonized for women as well. Like, what do you think about an angry woman? What's the one word that all women get called when they're angry? Crazy bitch. Crazy bitch, right? They get called a bitch. Mm. And, and it's unfortunate because anger is such a healthy thing. Like in, in guys, for most men, here's, here's the secret. For most men, anger actually is the conduit for them to actually be able to experience other emotions. But because that one emotion has been bastardized and it's been, Ooh. it's been like pushed out to the side, mm-hmm. it's been, you know, shamed and made wrong, then they, they've cut themselves off because that's oftentimes the access point for them to, for them to right. access the deeper emotions. So, so anger is like the gateway drug for the other emotions, but because it's so villainized, we're not allowing all oh, that that makes so much sense. Yeah. And so a lot of guys like, here's, here's the difference that I want. I just, I just want to unpack this really quick, just because there might be listeners yeah. out there that are like, this guy's off his rocker. Um, so there is a distinction. I want to make the distinction between anger and aggression. Mm-hmm. Anger is a healthy emotion. Anger is something that does not harm. It does not attack. And it, it, does, not, um, it, it does not create destruction, mm-hmm. right? Anger is something that, that can be equally expressed to love. Anger is something that can be equally expressed to sadness or, mm. um, or, or joy and excitement. It's just a different polarity, right? And so aggression is the attack version of, of anger. It's the directed right. version. It's when somebody, right. when somebody hasn't communicated their anger and it builds up and it, they like hold it in and then it builds up and it explodes and they say mm-hmm. really hurtful mm-hmm. things. They throw things, they break right. things, you know, and it's, and it's very outwardly expressed. And so, you know, our goal isn't to, you know, shame men for anger. It's actually mm-hmm. to allow them to experience anger because that's going to be the access point for them to see joy, to see deep love, to see intimacy, to see shame, to see guilt. It's going to be the access point for all of that. It's really at the centrifuge of masculinity in a lot of ways. Mm. So what are some ways that we can give ourselves permission to process our anger, recognize we have it? And like, what's, what's like the emotional process that we can start to take to, to unleash that? 
so for everybody, I like to say that there's four stages of anger and the there's, there's anger in and anger out. And I'll just explain those two and I'll go to the other ones. So okay. anger in is, you know, most nice guys have this, right? So if you've ever dated a nice guy, he w- he probably had anger in, he probably didn't want to have a lot of conflict in the relationship. He probably held in um, and avoided any sort of confrontation. If he was really angry or upset, he would say things like, oh no, it's okay, I'm, I'm fine, or it's okay, like I- I'm totally okay. And he would just hold the anger in, or he would just shut down because he didn't want to like, quote unquote, explode or lose it. So that's right. anger in. Right. Anger out is the opposite of that. You maybe this is usually synonymous with the with the asshole men that are out there, right? Right, right. They they experience any sort of confrontation, and all of a sudden their chest puffs up, right. and they start like yelling and throwing down mm. f bombs, and they're like pissed off, and everything's your fault, and they're they're attacking, right? Right. So those are the those are kind of like the foundation. From there is mindful anger, and mindful anger is this is almost like a way of spiritually bypassing anger where it's like, Oh, I'm witnessing my anger and there's my anger, but nothing actually gets talked about. So it's almost like containing that anger within us. The last one is what I like to call uh, the warrior's anger. And there might be, you know, you want to call this like heart centered anger or whatever, but basically the warrior's anger is when you are able to be mindful of it, you're able to witness it and you're still able to communicate with people. The reason why a lot of guys have shit boundaries is because they, they're, they're witness to their anger, but they do nothing about it. Anger is actually a really important part of boundaries because if you don't get angry, you never set boundaries, right? Ooh, you let people oh, walk all over you. That's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah. So, hmm. I, so I think being able to witness and, and help, help uncover, just like help uncover what your, what your partner, so this is you know, for, the, for the men that are in your lives out there, to help him understand or uncover what his sort of like modus, his MO, modus operandi is for his regular platform of, of anger will be really helpful and to make space in your relationship for, for his anger. Like mm-hmm. I, I've worked with couples before where the guy, you know, with permission in the, in the setting would be able to like let his anger out and actually like express himself. And the woman was like turned on and felt safer and was more, felt more connected because he had shut down this huge part of himself that she knew was there because women are so incredible and beautiful creatures and they're so tuned in to, to our emotions, you know, oftentimes way more than, when, than the guy is. And all of a sudden she was like, yes, there you are. I can see you. I feel safer because you're expressing yeah. your anger in a healthy way. Yeah. I feel connected to you, which is what I've been looking for. I feel emotionally connected to you. And so, you know, as, as, a, as a partner in an intimate relationship, the most powerful thing that a, a woman can do is to make space for a man's anger, not mm. to take his anger, not to say like, I'm going to be your verbal punching bag because right, right, that's, right. that's, that's abuse, right? And we don't yeah. want to make room for that at all. Mm-hmm. But there needs to be room for your anger as a woman in the relationship and there needs to be room for his anger as mm. well. And to know the distinction between anger and aggression is yeah. so huge to be able to say, I feel mm-hmm. like this is crossing the line into mm-hmm. aggression. Yeah. I feel like you're not expressing your anger anymore. It's, it's actually becoming just like directed and we need to take a step back. I love that distinction. That's, that's beautiful. I think also um, it's important to look at like, how did we, um, how do we perceive anger when we were just children or aggression, right? So if we had parents who were angry, um, maybe we like put that shit on lock and have never given ourselves permission. But if we can make that distinction and be like, okay, it's not cool to be aggressive, like my father or mother or uncle or whoever was in my life. Mm. Um, but it's, it's beautiful and healthy to be angry. And I think what happens is, is like when we're, when we're young and we see people acting out in aggressive ways, we go, okay, it triggers trauma in our body. And then we live this life of like, I'm not going to allow myself to do that because I don't want to reactivate that trauma again. So I think it's so important to your point of like, is it aggression or is it anger? Is it anger? And you're just literally processing an emotion that's fiery that just needs to be off the emotional landscape. Or are you directing it at another human being out of like a place of like wounding? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that like there needs to be room in the in a relationship. And I guess we I'm kind of talking about specifically within a an intimate relationship because I think that that's you know that's what a lot of people want to know about, right? Yeah. Um, but but there needs to be space for that sort of full blooded um, expression to come out. And I almost guarantee you that if you create the space for that, and and you might want to do that within the confines of the context of therapy, right? Like you might want to go see somebody as a couple and 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 allow that to like unfold properly. Um, or if you feel comfortable having the conversation with your partner, being able to do that it will will be very helpful. But I think for a lot of women out there, you know, they especially women that you know, are over the age of like 35, they probably grew up with like two types of male fathers, maybe three types, either he wasn't around at all, Mm -hmm. or he was emotionally stilted. So he, you know, hardly ever said things like, I love you was very hard, you know, high expectations, overly protective. Um, Or he was a little bit more forward thinking. And, and maybe for the, for the women that are out there that were lucky enough, they had a father who was somewhat emotionally intelligent. Right. And so now they're looking for that in, in men in their life. And, and they're like, where are all the good guys, right? Mm-hmm. Where have all the good guys gone? Mm-hmm. And, and so creating that space within your relationship where, where your partner can show up and express anger will make it, it will almost give permission and incentivize mm-hmm. him to be able to express joy and to be able to express love and intimacy because there's room for him to be vulnerably angry, mm-hmm. right? It takes vulnerability to still be angry, especially in our modern day society where a lot of guys are seeing an environment where any type of, of trait that's related to masculinity is like cut down, you know, like it's really, yeah. that's where the, that's where the emasculation comes in. It's just like anger is a masculine trait. It's bad. It's wrong. You should feel ashamed for having it, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and that's where guys start to shut down. And, and they don't feel like they can actually show up fully in the relationship. And that's what leaves women always saying, where are all the good men? Right. Oh, this is so juicy. <laughs> I, this is so good. Um, okay, let's, let's move into to that then, um, emasculating men. Um, I'll just speak for myself as like a lead way into this. Like I, a few years ago, I was like way more masculine than I am now. And I... I was either attracting women, like men. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately. I was a lesbian. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like attracting men who, who like, I'm like, what's going on here? Like, it, they're so, they're so, or, or I would attract a guy um, and then he would feel like, oh, I, I just can't even, I can't even go there. Right. This one boyfriend called me like a t- tornado. He's like, you're just too much. Um, and so, so it's this whole concept of like, how can we, like, what are we doing for you guys? Like what's happening? Cause like, have you ever felt emasculated by a woman? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really interesting. I think, I think that, um, yeah, I have I, just to answer your question straight yeah. up. Yes. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, absolutely. It's, it's happened. And I think that it happens, it happens subtly. Like I'll give you an example. I was a, at a wedding on Sunday and I got sat at a table where I didn't know anybody. And I was at one of my friend's weddings and I, I was, you know, flying solo. Um, and the, there was two women sitting next to me and they were like, great. They were very funny. They're, you know, they're having fun. They're drinking. And, uh, and then they started asking me what I do. And so I told them about man talks and it was really interesting to see how quickly their perception and behavior changed instantaneously. I was like, oh, I work with men. I run an international organization for men's you know, development to help develop more self-aware men in the world so they can be better fathers, husbands, and leaders. And instantaneously, one of the women, one of the women was like, oh, that sounds like some misogynistic KKK bullshit. No. Legitimately, legitimately. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I was like, you know, where, where did that come from? You know, like, have you, have you dated abusive men in the past? Like, you know, and so I got like right into like therapist mode. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like right there. Yeah, I'll show you, bitch. <laughs> and, and so I was like, you know, where did that come from? And she's yeah. like, well, yeah, you know, like I have, and a lot of men are assholes and men already have everything and da, 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 da. Right. And I was like, okay, cool. So I understand that. And in order for men to change, in order for men to create more equality, in order for men to be more emotionally intelligent, don't you think that we should be doing something from our side 
to support them? Like, don't you think that men should be doing something about it to support them? And she was like, yeah, I, I guess I hadn't really thought about that. Like, I guess you are in, in a lot of ways actually supporting women. And I was like, yeah, but it was interesting to see how quickly, she, you know, because, wow. because, the, and simply because the title is called man talks, man talks. that's yeah. it. And that, yeah. that was it. That was the basis of her judgment. It was just simply off of the title without really knowing anything about what we do. And all of a sudden I was, you know, a misogynistic KKK, you know, like it was, it was nuts. That's but, so insane. So I think that there's, and that was based off of her past history and, For you know, sure. people she For dated, sure. et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Well, it's super interesting. I, I know like I've, re- I've written a few blogs for, for man talks and like, I, I can't remember what I wrote about, but there's like haters out there who like think that what you're doing is like, just like go men, only men. And it's like, that's actually the complete opposite. Like when we can inspire men to be better leaders, to be more integrated, to feel their feelings, to, to just like own their truth, get angry. It's like, they're only going to show up better for us. Yeah. You know? It's like integration is what the planet is starving for. And so the fact that you're creating this incredible movement to support men to be able to mesh together beautifully in harmony and balance, like that's incredible. Like we need to understand like the 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 potency of that. Well, and I, I think that it's it's what's interesting is that there there's a there's a couple of things on this, but you know, a lot of the sad thing that I see is that I meet these incredible women who are just rock stars they are like they're they're busting ass in their career Mm -hmm. they are leaders in their industry you know they they really are um they're really paving the way for a lot of women and i have so much love and respect for them and what i often see is that many parts of their life are working really well but they're struggling in their relationship yeah because they can't seem to find a guy who can quote unquote handle them right? Like you were talking about that one guy called you a tornado. Yeah. It's like if, if a man is really in his masculine, if he understands masculinity, healthy masculinity, he has integrated the feminine. He understands the feminine. He appreciates and respects the feminine mm. and your tornado will not face him. Totally. It just won't. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. the benefit. And that's the benefit. That's the benefit that, that often gets missed is like, if we are helping to develop more integrated men, more integrated masculinity, where they can understand the feminine, they're just going to be able to show up better. They're going to be yeah. able to create more equality, more diversity mm-hmm. in the workplace, at home. They're going to be able to show up more, more potently in the boardroom, in the bedroom, like you mm-hmm. name it. They're going to be able to show up there properly. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's just a benefit. Yeah. It's so fascinating. Like I, I went through this, this phase of like, I need to change. And like by nature, like I'm, when I'm not at my computer, like getting shit done, I'm like super, super, super feminine. But like, like how I perceive my, like how people perceive me online is like, oh, she's a hustler. She's this, she's that and, and, and whatever. And so it's so interesting to like, kind of like, like the, the guys that I date, it's like, they, they think that's who I am. But, but it's not. And it's like, I see them trying to be like a chameleon to try and like fit that. I'm like, all I want you to do is be the flagpole to my flag. Like, I just want to like, I just want to like play and create and do my thing. And I just, I just want a guy that's just like, I'm integrated. I'm here. It's all good. So I can just like soften and relax and just like be. Yeah. I don't want to be a man in my relationship. You know, like I'm running shit all day long, trying to like manage teams and build like this, you know, huge company and yada, yada, yada. It's like all I literally, all I want to do in a relationship is nothing, yeah. you know, like, and just like surrender and just relax. And it's, it's interesting that, um, it's, it's, it's just simply the, the last couple guys I've dated have just not been like you talked about as integrated in their masculine. Yeah. So can we, can we talk about that? Cause I feel like this is a common thing that I hear from a lot of women who are like, they're in the dating world, they're on the dating apps and you know, the guys are flaky or, you know, they're just, they have no boundaries and they just walk all over them. Mm -hmm. And so I I would love to talk about this just, just from like a couple, a a couple of standpoints. Is that, is that cool? Yeah, let's do it. (laughs) So I think from a guy's perspective, like, and this is where, what we're trying to do with man talks is to like help educate men on, you know, what is masculinity? How do you show up? And, and, and how does it, how is it a benefit in your relationship? Right? Because I think for a lot of guys, Hold, holding space. Let's talk about holding space because this, this term gets thrown around so much. And I think, that, I think that what I've come to realize, I had this realization the other day in a workshop that I was giving where I was like, who here's hold, heard of holding space? And everybody put up their hand. There's like 200 people in the room. I was like, cool. Who here can explain what holding space is? 
and one person put their hand up. Like, <laughs> what I've realized is that 99% of the people have no fucking clue. Right. Maybe they know what it is, but if they had to explain how to do it, I think is a huge issue. So totally. for me, holding space in the relationship is being able to witness your partner's emotional state while simultaneously being able to witness your own. And it, mm. and it takes practice, right? Yeah. Because especially for men, and this is where, you know, what really strong kick-ass women are looking for is a man that can, you know, like you said, quote unquote, face the storm and be okay with it mm. and be okay with, you know, having you like be fiery, mm. you know, and show that like boss part of you off mm. and be able to stand there and be like, okay, thanks for saying that. I got you. It's all good. Mm. And not turn into like this sniveling, you know, little idiot, this like little man child or, yeah. or like stonewall shut down and yeah. feel like he can't take that and, and walk away from the relationship. Mm. So, so from both of our sides, what holding space actually means, and this is what it's so important for men. And I, I hope that this podcast gets shared with some guys up there. Obviously it's going to go out to my community, but, yeah. but for men, the big piece is to be able to understand like, okay, when she says that, what actually happens for me? Right. You know, that's holding space to not mm. react to the, to the reactivity that happens in our emotional body. Because mm. for most men, because they're living in their head, they can't hold space because their partner, you know, their wife or their girlfriend will say something and they'll just immediately react to it. Yeah. They, they don't even see what's happening emotionally. They just mm. like, boom, the, the emotion happens and all of a sudden they say something or they shut right. down or they yeah. like walk away or they slam the door. And for like the really incredible women out there that, that, are, that are looking for a man, that the key is to find a guy who has done some form of self-work or self-reflection. Mm -hmm. Like if you really want to know if a guy is self-aware, start asking him like, you know, what do you do to reflect? Mm. like that should be that should be a question that you ask on date number one it's not intrusive you know but it'll give you a good idea of whether or not he actually carves out time for himself like don't waste right. your time don't waste your time with the guys that are you know 35 and still going to the fucking nightclub and drinking their faces off two or three mm -hmm. times a week like they're they're just not it you know yeah. and if you're out there crushing it making a quarter of a million dollars a year mm -hmm. you know running your own business or you know you're a professional don't waste your time on those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just, mm -hmm. just re-triggering your wounds. So ask questions like, uh, how, do you, how do you reflect? You know, yeah. how, how do you cultivate that? What do you do? And That's listen for things like meditation and journaling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a part of a men's group. Like those types of things, mm -hmm. they'll, you can tell that they're starting to get it. Mm. That's beautiful. I love that. And you know what? It's like, I find that so sexy when men say those sorts of things. Like, yeah, I met it like a guy that meditates. Are you kidding me? Like, fuck yeah. Like, that's so cool for me. So, so cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's like, it's going back to this whole piece of like a man that does his work and a woman that does his work, like in the context of your relationship, right? You and V, like you both are doing your work separately and then you come together and you build this like structure that like j only is like feeding each other and, and growing together as well, which is like that mm. divine like integration. But we can't actually achieve that like cohesive integration that that adds value to each other and grows up without like the individual work of each partner. Mm. Yeah, and I, and I think I, what you touched on there is is super important. And I think that there's a sense of like masculine leadership that a lot of a lot of people are looking for like mm. not not in the sense that like you know men need to be like the decision maker or wear the pants or any of that like stereotypical bullshit that's not what i'm mm. saying what i'm saying is that a lot of women are looking for a sense of leadership in in the men that they want to date in the sense that they're looking for a guy who can hold that space you know who can take the lead to be able to identify yeah. like okay right now she just needs me to listen mm. and I, I need to answer these questions. And this right. actually is, shouldn't be emotionally triggering for me. Right. I should be able to like, you know, take the lead, help her like uncover what's going on because she would do the same thing for me, you mm -hmm. know? And, and a lot of guys, it's like dancing, right? A lot of guys don't know how to lead anymore in a relationship. Like they've really lost that art. And, and so, and so they struggle. And so as soon as their partner breaks down, or, or is having a, having a struggle or an issue or something like that, they go straight into fixing. Mm -hmm. They go straight into trying to solve the problem. Right. Because they've been taught, circling back to where we started, that intelligence is, the, is like the pinnacle of masculinity. Yeah. And so that's all they know. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't want you to fix me. I yeah. just want you to listen. Yes. Like, well, what, what do you mean? Listen and then what? What do I do after I listen? Yeah. 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 Because it's, it's, it's interesting. And that, yeah, I guess that goes back to the whole holding space thing. It's like, can we communicate to men like, hey, I don't, like before we say it, before we say it, I don't need you to fix my problem. I don't need anything from you. I don't need to, you to find a solution. I just want to be heard. I yeah. I just want to be heard. That's it. Yeah. And I, I think it's interesting. Like you talk about, um, you know, when women are emasculating men, I'm curious as to like, when are some of the points that, that you feel like as, as a woman or other women that are out there that when they are emasculating men, like when are some of those points that actually show up? Is it at work? Is it at yeah, home? Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll share this. So the last guy I dated, um, really amazing guy, super awesome. But I found like he wasn't being honest with me when it came to money. Mm. And so it was like, because of like what I do in my company, whatever, whatever, it's like, he couldn't, ha- I, this is what I think. It's like, he couldn't handle, like I was achieving a certain level of success, which was greater than his current level of like financial success. And that's so relative anyways. And so like, he was lying to me about like financial things. So I would, I would have the perception that he was like doing really well financially, mm. you know? And so for me, like I saw that as like, I, the message I got was like, I'm emasculating him with my, um, success. And, and I'm like, oh, God, that sucks. And there was this part of me that there was this part of me in that. Cause I really cared about this person and he's wonderful. But there was this part of me that was like, Oh, like I, like, I wish I wasn't in this position so I could be with him. And it was like that very like small child. Like I knew that wasn't my woman self. It was like my small wounded child that was like making that decision. Um, but there was this part of me that was like that. So like, that's so unfortunate because mm. our connection was so good, but I felt like there was, there was a disconnect and there was like a lack of like authenticity because he, he wasn't feeling like the man in our connection. Yeah. I mean, it, isn't that funny how, how much like this sort of societal roles have started to shift, mm-hmm. you know, and you see like my parents are a perfect example of this. Like my, my dad and my stepmom she has always made probably 10 times what he makes. Wow. And he was the, he was the guy that like, he made good money, but you know, not nearly what she did, but he was the guy that, you know, picked the kids up from school and took care of them, made them lunch, cleaned the yeah. house, you know, yeah. made dinner. And yeah. so we see a lot of societal roles shifting, but mm. there's still like, it really depends on the d- dynamic that you want. And so I would say for the women that are out there, like, you know, if you make really good money, and, and you're really successful, I would say start to uncover what type of dynamic you actually want from a partner. Because otherwise it's gonna be really challenging. Like mm-hmm. some, some of the women that I've met that do really well for themselves and run their own companies, they don't actually want that long term. You know, they, they, want it, they want to do that. They want to have the success. And then they want to meet a guy who can kind of like take over, not, not take over the business, but he can work and, you know, she can go into this more like traditional role of having kids and, yeah. and taking care of the house. And like, yeah. that's, what, that's what she actually wants to be doing. Mm-hmm. But I feel like a lot of women don't want to admit that because it's all of a sudden, it's like somehow you're, you're less of a lady boss or whatever, you yeah. know, bullshit term that you want to use yeah. because you want that. And that's just, yeah. that's just dumb. But yeah. then- but then there's other women that are like, they want that and that's all that they want. And mm-hmm. so maybe you do need to find a guy who's like, not, not the subordinate, not the submissive, you know, I mean, maybe in the bedroom, you like that kind of stuff, but, but maybe you do need to find the guy who's like totally fine with that and, wa- mm-hmm. and is going to be your biggest cheerleader and is going to be like, you go, babe. I got the house, you know, I got the shit on lockdown. Mm -hmm. I will take care of our family. You go out, you make the money, you build a business, you be the front runner and I will support you 110%. And I think that it's time for women to start asking that question of what dynamic that they actually want, because it's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. Uh, So interesting. We're talking about this. I'm really confused about this for myself right now. Mm. Like, I'm not sure, like I'm super attracted to like, you know, the entrepreneurial, like powerful go-getter man. Like, I'm like, that's so sexy. Like, oh my gosh. And if I didn't want to, if I didn't want to work one day, like I wouldn't have to, you know, like that for me is like so cool. And that's always been my like, quote unquote, like ideal. Um, But as I'm growing, I'm like, maybe 
what I want now is like a man who like just takes care of me, you know, mm. not financially, but like takes care of the house, takes care of the kids. Just like make sure I'm, I'm, I'm all good. Like really supports me like emotionally so that I can run this. Company. And so it's like, I, like I'm in a phase right now where I'm questioning that for myself and I'm, I'm super unclear about that right now. And I think um, it's, it's part of like the process I'm going through right now is like, I, I just feel like I need clarity on that before I attract the next partner in. Yeah. And I think understanding the masculine and feminine dynamics is so important in that, right? Because as you start to uncover that, like you can still find a really masculine guy who's going to be your cheerleader, you know, yes. who's going to yes. hold the space. There's, there's this yeah. perception yeah. that like, if, you know, if he's going to be the, the supporter in mm -hmm. the relationship, that he's going to be like this, you know, very effeminine woman, like totally. actually totally. no, like you can have yeah. a very strong, mm. stable pillar of a man who, who might just be, feel more fulfilled in, in that caretaking role than he does in being the one that's like out there hustling, yes. you know? Yes. Yeah. And so it's cool to hear you say that because I think that more women need to, need to start to question that. Not that I'm no, again, know what it's like to be a woman, but to mm. start to question that so that when you are dating and when you're meeting these men, you can experience what it's like to have a very masculine man who, you know, is out there making the money and, and would really be the front runner and kind of decide like, is that what I want? Or mm. do I want somebody that's like very masculine and grounded that I can come home to, that I can just be playful with, that yeah. I can just like, you know, melt yeah. into this space with and, and just have him like really support me. You know, totally, totally. Yeah. It's such a powerful question to ask. It is such a powerful question to ask. I, um, I dated a guy who was also like an entrepreneur like me, and maybe this is because he wasn't as like sure of himself, but it, it felt like, it felt like a power struggle. You know, it felt mm. like, it's like, he's like, Oh, I got the speaking engagement. And then, or like, I, I would do something. He's like, Oh, but I got this thing. And then it, you know, it was like, it was kind of like that. I'm like competition. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Competition. I'm like, that doesn't feel good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, it's just like such a powerful question to ask women, especially women who are like entrepreneurs or like, like very, you know, successful again, that's relative, but like a very like career focused women, like, what is it that you actually want? Like what would really feel good to you? Because a part of me thinks like, do I want to be with a powerful, successful man? Like, is that my ego that wants that? Or is that my soul? Right. Mm. It's like, I I'm beginning to think like, I think that's my ego that wants that mm -hmm. to be like, Oh, look, like this is my man. Like, look how great he is. Right. But that's not love. Like that's not truth. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, where, where we ultimately want to go is, you know, how does it feel to be around that person? Because I think at the end of the day, the support that we're all looking for men, women, you know, transgender, doesn't matter how you identify is really about connection you know? Mm. And, and it's really, what it really boils down to is how do I feel around that person? And I, I interviewed this woman, um, on the man talks podcast named Giordana Tocicelli, who you might want to have oh, on. Yeah. She's awesome. Yeah. She's great. Um, great. but I interviewed her and she was describing the way that it feels to be around her fiance. And she said, you know, I knew that he was the one because it was like I had been out in the sun for years and he just provided shade for me to sit under. And I thought, what a beautiful description wow. of what that feels like. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's kind of it, you know, like whether, whether you end up finding the guy who's like a fucking rock star at business and he's, you know, making a shit ton of money or, you know, he's like the really supportive guy who is, you know, going to hold down the fort while you go out and crush, regardless of all that. Ultimately, I think what, what we're really looking for is that person that can provide that space, you know, that feeling yeah. for us. And, and I think that that's what a lot of women for, are looking for in men. And I think that that's what a lot of men are trying to provide for women. But they've been taught that their mm. value is in money, that yeah. their value yes. is, in, yes. is in their accomplishments. And so yeah. they end up competing with their partners. And real power couples just find a way to provide shade for each other. Okay. I love this. So basically I'm just going to like package that. Yes. It's like what you're saying is like, rather than like, what do I want in a guy? It's like, how do I want to feel in that relationship? Like, how do I want to feel rather than what to look for? How do I want to feel? And I think that's like the distinction that not a lot of people are actually feeling, feeling about, you know, totally. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Totally. 
Oh, that's good. I love this. I love this stuff. Like this stuff gets me so fired up. What what time is it? <laughs> we're getting we're getting close. <laughs> we're getting close. Okay, let's wrap this. Let's wrap this up, yo. Um, dang, that was a lot of goodness. That was that was some that was some juicy goodness. I think um, you know we we covered emasculation. We covered masculine and feminine dynamics. We covered. I mean, we covered quite a few things in, in terms of like how men, how women can support men. Yeah. I, I think the other thing too is like, there's a lot of guys out there that are really, I think the, the last, the last piece of perspective that I would love to offer is that men hate failing. Like they fucking hate failing. We hate mm. failing in our relationships and you know, sure. There's, there's lazy bastards out there that don't want to do anything. You probably don't want to date them anyway. Um, but men do not want to fail. They want to, they want to provide something, you know, whether that's financially, whether that's emotionally, whether that's whatever that looks like, they want to feel successful in their relationship. And I think, you know, it, to, to just kind of re look at, I would challenge all the women listening to this podcast to like, look at your narratives around men. You know, do you think that there's no good guys out in the world because you're going to keep finding the assholes? Do you think that all men are cheaters because that's what you're going to find and really look at your own personal narratives. And I had to do this with women too, to like, what are my, what were my personal narratives around women and, and start to identify what it actually is that you want to feel when you're around a guy, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and go for that because the rest of the logistics are just logistics and, and you can work through almost any logistic. My partner lives 3000 miles away, you know, 3000 miles and we make it work and we make it work super fucking well. And, and that is the most important thing that I can say is just like tune in to what it feels like to be around people and look at your narratives around guys. Because I think that, you know, there are some huge stereotypes about men on the, on the masculine side and on the feminine side. And if we can start to address those, we can start to integrate a little bit more in a healthy way and come together and our relationships will benefit because of it. Oh my gosh. That's so beautiful. That is so freaking, I, I just got like full body, like chills, <laughs> like, there's like some serious energy going through my body. Like I, and I'm feeling this for the people that are going to be listening to what you just said. Cause that's so freaking powerful. Mm. So good. Oh man, I love you so much. I love you too, Sam. It's so obvious that you're one of my best friends. Uh, <laughs> God, I made God, I made such a good decision. <laughs> um, and and to Connor's point, what he said earlier in the show, how do we help men? We help direct them. And so. Connor has an incredible international organization that, that literally does this exact thing. I spoke on one of his stages once. It was um the What Women Want. Um, normally it's all guys, but it was like what women want. That was super fun. It was awesome. Um, but like, I know firsthand the work that you're doing and like the difference that you're making in men. And um, for those of you who like are in relationships or maybe it's your guy friends, whatever it is, like this resource, I can speak fully in full confidence, confidence, confidently <laughs> that um, the work you're doing in the world is like profound. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. And that's just mantalks.com. Yep. Okay, cool. So we will put all the links uh, or the link to the social media and website and all that kind of stuff in the show notes. So thank you, Connor. Thanks so much for having me. That was so fun. You're so welcome. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode on the Hungry for Happiness podcast. You can join the conversation with women just like yourself at hungryonfacebook.com. Until next week, ladies, stay classy and badass.